Hello everyone, uh, I just decided we discuss the HSG. Um, those images can be very difficult to interpret and um, this investigation is something that is very common. We know that our guy in clinics, 30% uh, of the patients we see are um, infertility and about 20 to 30% of those uh, patients have um, tubal damage as a result of infertility. So this is a re, uh, an investigation that we'll see a lot of times and also it's an investigation that we see uh, very commonly uh, in our exams. So uh, let's look at the um, images and and just have the basic understanding of of the images. So like we already discussed in uh, the other video, uh, we normally take about four x-rays. Um, one is a control, one is to look at the um, endometrial uh, cavity, another one is to look at the um, uh, tubal lining, uh, is there any blockage in the tube? So we look at the tubes in the second x-ray and in the third one we just want to see uh, the spill. But we have to um, start with this control because when we see um, the images themselves, we have to con uh, to compare with the control to make uh, some interpretation. Otherwise, we'll call something a spill which is born and therefore we are comparing uh, what is uh, occurring on the x-ray with contrast and what is on the x-ray without um, uh, contrast. So this is um, this is like a normal HSG uh, where we can see the uterus is clearly visible, the tubes are thin and clearly visible. We can see the spew of the dye uh, on the other side. Uh, the only th reminder and that's why I put this uh, slide here is that um, when we see a spill we need to remember that what we are measuring is tubal patency and not tubal function per se. So I showed this picture for, for one reason. Uh, so we see that uh, on one side it looks like uh, the tube is um, blocked on one side. Uh, let's use a, a pointer. So it looks like the tube is blocked on this side um, and uh, the fallopian tube on the, on the left side of the patient looks kind of normalish and we can see that there's a, there's a spill uh, on, the, on the left side but the right side looks blocked. So why I put this picture there is that we should always remember that this is uh, suspicious because uh, the causative uh, agents for tubal blockage uh, don't usually damage one tube and leave the other tube um, uh, normal. So they will affect uh, both tubes. Uh, this, uh, of course, this is possible if a patient had the, um, an ectopic pregnancy and uh, one tube was tied and then they fail to become pregnant, then you come and see an investigation, then you see one tube is normal and the other one is not normal. So then the usual explanation to this uh, picture is that um, there was less resistance on the on one side and therefore the dye uh, followed that that route instead of going on on another route. So that's one way to explain. This one is again, this is a uterus. This, this here is the um, cannula, which is big at the bottom here so that it blocks the, the contrast from flowing out. We can see that this is a well-defined uh, lining on the side. So this is um, contrast that is inside a cavity. So this is a damaged tube. Same as this side, this is so smooth and the lining is so uh, smooth on, on the sides that you can see that this um, this uh, contrast is inside, it's collected inside the, some tube. So that is clear to see. So this is a hydrosalpings. Both tubes are damaged. Uh, these patients cannot become pregnant uh, by natural methods. So this patient definitely would need uh, IVF. And if someone is going for IVF with damaged tube like this, it's, it's um, advisable that the tubes are removed because a success rate when the tubes are removed 
is better than when the tubes that are damaged like this are left are left in situ. Um, this uh, picture is um, showing us again we can see there's a cannula here there's a casco speculum there around the cannula then there's contrast this is a lining of the uterus here and there's a blockage um, around here we can see where the arrows are um, I bring this picture just as a reminder that bilateral blockage when we see it um, we need to ask some questions because bilateral blockage is again on the same spot unusual especially in the cornu because when you put in a contrast usually the cornu are the ones that end up with all these um, spasms and because of the spasms the contrast fails to go all the way and then it appears like um, uh, both sides are blocked so that's um, uh, something we need to think about when we see um, cornu blockage on both sides that probably it's spasms of the tubes that has caused the blockage and that is why in the uh, preliminaries of the procedure would normally give um, a kind of an antispasmodic to avoid this uh, from happening yeah, so this x-ray is here to just show what happens sometimes. Uh, so when you have um, contrast injected into the endometrial cavity and there's some resistance or it's injected with uh, some force, um, contrast can get into the vascular system and it can uh, look uh, something like this. So it's something that you shouldn't misinterpret. It's contrast that has just gone into the intravascular space and it's moving in the in the blood vessels. Um, lastly, and I think this is the last slide, just showing the um, how HSG can be important in showing um, uterine abnormalities. So this is a biconiate uterus. You can see um, that there's a one part of the uterus. You remember that the Mullerian system on the left and right side come together and they make a uterus. So when there's that abnormality, um, we can see that there's a fusion wasn't complete. So we can see one horn on the right side and one horn on the left side of this patient. We can see that the tubes are kind of open, a pattern, we can see spill on both sides of the of the patient. So <clears throat> uh, an HSG can show us some uterine uh, abnormalities. Yeah, so I hope next time we look at an HSG, we look at it with um, kind of different eyes, with better uh, understanding um uh, thank you so much for listening and we will see you in the next uh, presentation